Hello friends, this is Pastor Daniel Gouveia and today I would like to share with you some thoughts concerning confession. What does the Bible say? Well, let's start with Psalm 32 verses 3 through 5. David wrote, When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. See, while David tried to conceal his sins from God, he was feeling miserable. But when he decided to open his heart to God and acknowledge his transgressions, when he confessed his sins, God forgave him and took his iniquity away. Of course, it is pointless to try to hide our sins from God, because he knows all things. Some may even ask, why should I pray? And why should I confess my sins if God knows everything about me? He knows everything I have done. Well, in this psalm, you have part of the answer. It is actually very good for you and for me when we open our hearts to God. Yes, He knows what we have done. But before we confess our sins, our relationship with Him is broken and we feel miserable. However, we can come today just as we are, claiming the blood of Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary for our sins and acknowledge exactly what we have done. True confession is most of the times not general, but specific. We need to acknowledge exactly what we have done wrong, recognize that we have missed the mark, and as we do so, our hearts are brought back into harmony with God through the ministry of the Holy Spirit and by the blood of Christ. I love that this passage says, I will confess to the Lord. Some people think that they need to go through human mediators, but there is only one human mediator who is not only human in the name of whom we are to come to the presence of God, and that is Jesus Christ. Like we read in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Jesus is the only one who was crucified for your sins. He is the only one who is both God and man, and who can reconcile man and God, human beings and divinity. In the name of Him, we are to come to the presence of God, confess our sins, and ask for forgiveness. I am blown away by the simplicity of what God is asking us. He is not asking us to walk on a long pilgrimage. He is not asking us to punish our bodies or our minds or our hearts. He is not asking us to cry aloud for days and days. He is just asking us to recognize our sins and confess them to Him. Just tell Him what you did wrong and God will forgive you if you are truly repentant. In 1 John chapter 1 verses 8 and 9, we find these amazing words. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isn't this an amazing promise? If you confess your sins, if I confess my sins, God is faithful and just not only to forgive our sins, but to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And that brings me to our next Bible passage today. It's in Proverbs 28 verse 13. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. See, God is calling us to confess our sins to Him, but also to believe that through the grace of Christ, power is given to us to overcome sin. We cannot overcome sin and Satan in our own strength, of course, but God is all-powerful. To deny that God has the power 
to help us not to sin is to deny what the Bible says. Because in the Bible, we read that He is powerful to keep us from stumbling. When we give our hearts to Christ in faith, He changes us. He gives us a new heart. He gives us a desire to obey God. Sometimes we fall, but that is not God's fault. If we remain in Him, if we trust in Him, if we live a life of continual communion with God, He will make of each and every one of us an overcomer. We are no longer slaves of sin, but we are servants of God and of righteousness. When we confess our sins, we are to forsake them by the grace and power of Jesus. Now you may ask, but maybe I have sins that I am not aware of. Well, in the Bible, we find provision and promises that can accommodate for those as well. The Bible says in Psalm 19 verse 12, Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. There's many things we do, many things we think and feel that are not according to God's will and ideal. Sometimes we are aware of them, sometimes we are not. We should pray that God may bring to light those things that in our hearts do not please Him. And we should bring those things to Him and tell Him, Lord, I am doing my best to confess all of my sins. But as a sinner, I may be unaware of certain things or maybe I haven't been able to recognize and to acknowledge certain things that you are trying to show me. Please cleanse me from secret faults. Please bring out what is not right and give me a heart to understand and to receive that revelation from the Holy Spirit and help me to confess and to repent and to forsake my sins. We can pray like David prayed in Psalm 139 verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Friends, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Comparing ourselves to other human beings will be of no avail. We should compare ourselves to Jesus and confess our sins to God through Christ. Confess that we are very far away from that amazing ideal, the perfect life of Christ, and ask God to allow us to have Jesus in us through the Holy Spirit so that He may live His perfect life through us on this earth. Paul said, for to me to live is Christ. He said, I no longer live. Christ lives in me. That should be your experience and my my experience as well. And while we are on earth, while we are sinners, before the second coming of Christ, we will many times fall, but the hand of God is stretched out in mercy, helping all of those who want to walk with Him and live for Him because they love Him with all their hearts. Today, my friend, if you know that you have done something you should not have done, come to God. Come to Jesus. Confess your sins to Him and believe that he will forgive you. Of course, if you have hurt someone other than God, if your sin is not merely a secret sin, but if you have hurt another human being, and if that human being is still alive, you should come to him or her and ask her or him for his or her forgiveness. Jesus said it this way in Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar, and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. If you know that you have hurt someone, you should come to that person and ask him or her to forgive you. We cannot come to God and ask him to forgive a sin that we have committed against someone else before coming to that person and trying our best to be reconciled 
with that human being. He or she is a child of God. We hurt God when we hurt others. So we should come to them and ask them to forgive us. And after doing so, we should come to God and ask our Heavenly Father His forgiveness since we have wounded one of His children. If your sin is against a group of people, you should ask that group to forgive you. But when sin is a private matter, it should be dealt privately. When your sin concerns only you and God, you should come only to God and ask Him to forgive you and trust in His promise that He will forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Isn't this good news? Aren't you happy and excited that although we are sinners, we have such an amazing and great and wonderful and merciful Savior in Jesus Christ? One who has opened the way so we could be forgiven by God of even our darkest sins. No matter what you have done, just come to God today. Come to Jesus. He says, come to me, all you who are tired and oppressed, and I will give you rest. When you confess your sins to God, when you tell him the truth about your life and your character, about the desires, imaginations, feelings of your heart that are wicked, when we open up about everything that we are aware of that is not right, there is an overwhelming, amazing sense of peace and forgiveness and joy that comes upon our hearts, our minds, and our lives. Sometimes we are even healed physically and emotionally when we are healed spiritually. May God bless you. May he give you a wonderful week with Jesus. And may you watch and pray, confessing your sins and knowing that in Jesus you are forgiven. Amen.